Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, but with our newest expert and quickly becoming a fan favorite, Beth Traversa. How you doing, Beth? Hi, I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks so much for having me back. I'm very excited to be here. It's always one of my favorite times of the week, and I was really excited to be here today doing this video with you. That is awesome. So what's something we did over the last week or so is we have added you to uh, the course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, which also comes with our private Facebook group called One Rental at a Time Works. And we posed a question to the nearly 2,000 members in there saying, what questions did you got for Beth? So uh, we're going to do the first two videos on the questions. I'm going to read them, and then we're just going to wrap about them. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. And first off, thank you for being a part of the group and interacting. People really do love it. Oh, I love uh, it. It's really yeah. one of my favorite things to do is to get in there and interact and provide value and hopefully, uh, you know, provide some information that people will be able to find useful in their path to become real estate investors or further their journey. Awesome. So this one came from Alyssa. We'll just use first names. I'm in the process of studying to get my real estate license. Woohoo. I think that's what that is. Or it's Wahoo. I think it's Woohoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would love to hear your advice to future newbie agent and what skills to focus growing on the most during the market downturn. What sort of things can an agent do to come out stronger on the other side? I'm excited. Beth is great. All so where, right. where do you want to start? Okay. Well, thanks, Alyssa. So first thing I want to say is getting started today is not really going to be that much different than getting started a year ago or a year before that. The markets are constantly in flux and things are changing. Um, there's challenges now that there were challenges a year ago. Challenges a year ago were completely different. Like you had to put on your battle armor to go into the bidding war every single time. And just new agents, you were getting knocked around a lot. Now, in this new market that things have shifted and we're going into a different phase, there's going to be challenges, but the the core uh, business principles remain the same. And one of the first things I'd recommend to any new agent, I want to say also, this applies to investors too, like people who are looking to get started in investing. So if, if you're not an agent out there and you're listening to this, and you don't want to be an agent, I think there still might be some nuggets you can pull from this that could be useful. Mm -hmm. Um so the first question I have for her or anyone looking to get started is, are you interested or are you committed? Mm. Because if you're interested, like, oh, I think I kind of want to be an agent because it looks fun and I watch the shows and mm. I heard you can be easy money or whatever, fill in the blank thing. That is not necessarily going to make you among the uh, 13% 13, 13 that will still be in business in five years. So if you want to be among that minority, you need to be committed and committed. The difference between being interested and being committed is when you're interested, you'll do it when you feel like doing it. And when you're committed, you do it no matter what. Yeah. So for example, like I, it could be for anything in life. Like I made a commitment to be more uh, physically fit, you know? And so I get up earlier because I could never had time to do it later in the day. I get up early, earlier, 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 just make sure I've got time to do everything before the day gets going and things get moving. So that's the same for, if you're looking to start a real estate business is you need to make a commitment that you're going to do this when you don't feel like doing it. Cause there are going to be ups and downs and it's a roller coaster. I think that's true for any entrepreneur, really. You're going to have your times that are going to feel great. And then you're going to get kicked in the teeth and then you're going to have to recover from that and do it on the days that you don't want to do it. Yeah. Th when I get this question again, this, this is an agent question, but you could just remove agent say investor. Good, yeah. Um, a couple of things I would want to say is starting today is actually amazing timing. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time. I believe the next two years are going to be the hardest two years for a new real estate agent. Yeah. These will likely, be, like if you start these next two years and survive, i.e. you're part of the 13%, I feel relatively confident that these could be the two hardest years of your career. Think about that. You're starting, you don't know anything. It doesn't matter. You don't have the high overhead. You don't have all of these other things. If you can go put on your armor and earn your scars and stripes in the next two years, you will be so far ahead of any agent starting in the next two years. Your network, your action, you will just have that. It will be it. I actually, Beth, feel horrible for agents where this is year three. Because right. you came into the market in the best two years I have ever seen. You didn't know what it was like to go work for a listing, to go, uh, you know, to put a price that was wish pricing and get it. You have adopted a lifestyle 
where you probably have a second car payment. You maybe have an office you can't afford. You may have teams, multiple virtual. You may have adopted a lifestyle that's going to take you to bankruptcy court if you don't cut back. So Absolutely. I really, I feel bad for the agents who started two years ago. I know it's time to get lean and mean and really focus on your business core. And I think if agents starting today, you really need to focus on becoming excellent at your craft. Mm -hmm. And that means you need to become a really great uh, coach for your clients. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm just spending a lot of my time doing now is explaining to, uh, I work with primarily with sellers, but I work with buyers too, but coaching them, people come to me, they still have their lives and their plans or things that they want to do. We heard the market shifting. What does that mean for us? Can we still sell our house? And so what I'm telling them is like, here's what we're doing now. We were doing that. Now we're doing this and just give them perspective and reassurance that as long as we price it right, we market it properly and we do these things right and set the expectations properly, then we can do this. And they respect that. They just want somebody to know, how do I do this? What do I do? And for buyers too, they want to know too, like, is this a good time to be buying? What happens if we buy now and, or what if interest rates go up or what if the market does this or that, you know, like they need insight on that. So we need to become the trusted advisors and really focus on to get that. You have to have understanding. So like one of the things I love that you do is your, your, your rundown every day, you know, every morning you get up, that's another, that's a commitment there that you keep. Mm -hmm. And so that's an example of somebody who's committed and we all appreciate that. But the same, so for, if you're an agent, what you need to be do is doing is doing a deep dive into your local market and getting out there and learning it so that when people, you have real life knowledge and not from a month ago, because things move really fast in my market, things have been moving lightning fast. I think faster than a lot of the country I'm in the Seattle area, but we spiked fastest, we dropped fastest. And now we're, we're doing what we're doing now, which I don't know what the future brings, but we we're, we're moving on to the next level, whatever that is. So we're beyond the wish pricing. We're beyond the inventory crash we're beyond that so yeah. but you got to know that if you're not in there seeing it learning it you won't know it um and one of the things that's most challenging for new agents is how do i know this i don't have any clients i don't have any business what do i do so what i would recommend for a lot of new agents is to consider either one of two things either joining a brokerage that offers a lot of training for new agents support is really going to be critical you need to be very careful who you surround yourself with and especially these first formative years. And then, or the other thing you may want to consider is joining a team because teams usually have more business. And that's really what, especially with the, if we have transactions dropping in my little area on the east side of Seattle, we're already down 50% year over year. It's already happened. That was last month, you know? And so that going forward, like who, the people who has those remaining 50% of the transactions, you know, and it's typically going to be the high producing teams more than anybody. So if you can get on there and get some training, you can get some real world knowledge. At yeah. the very least, get out there, look at houses every single day, learn everything you can about it. So you get to spot the trends, talk to other agents. Yeah. The last thing I would tell Alyssa, and again, this goes for agents or investors. And a lot of this is kind of self-reflection on what I did wrong. What I, what I did wrong in the beginning is I thought the answer lived in my magic Excel spreadsheet, which I could play with anywhere in the world because I had a job that took me all over the world. So I spent the first three or five years thinking I could do it by myself. Don't be that agent. Even if you look at your market every day, like I do, and I still do, and you know it better than anybody else, your little buy box or your area or your east side of Seattle, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What matters for an agent and what I would work on today, Alyssa, is I would try to meet two new people. I would, If I was an agent, I'd try to meet two new people a day and ask for referrals from everybody. Your job as an agent the first year, as far as I'm concerned, is to build up your Rolodex, your, your, your database, or whatever you want to call that. Get it to 100 people. The faster you do that, the more likely you are to stick in this business. It's about people. So figure out who, the, like, you could look up in something like PropStream, maybe in your local title company, I don't know. Like, who are the cash buyers? Meet them all. Meet them all. Figure out where their buy box is, send them listings, become a value, find out who the investors are, repeat buy, find anybody who's done two deals in your market, Alyssa, reach out. You're not going to talk to all of them, but you'll talk to half of them. So my biggest, my biggest thing would be to tell people is to grow your network. Agents usually call that a database. Yes, absolutely need to grow your database. And two points I want to make. 
So one is you need to make sure that you're, so if you talk to a top producer, producing agent in your area, like if agents call me all the time and I make sure to always be that one that calls back and provide, you know, we, we have abundance mindsets and we're happy to share, you know, don't hog up too much of their time without providing anything in return. You could offer to hold an open house or do a showing for them or something, something you know, give yeah. offer something, but most are willing to share and take advantage of that. And make sure you're surrounding yourself with positive people too, not the uh, whiners. You know, there's always a bunch of whiners hanging around. And I would say protect yourself from that because there is still people being very successful in any market and you need mm -hmm. to learn what they're doing. And the other thing too, is that your business is math. So you can break this down. And I'm not an analytical thinker. I'm not the spreadsheet maestro that I admire so much, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm not that. I, I love it, but I'm not that. But I would say- you can take it, say, I want to make whatever your number is, $200,000 a year, and say your average commission is $10,000 that you get to keep after all said and done. Work out how many appointments you need to go on every month to result in one transaction. So track and measure everything yes. and break it down even further to conversations made to have appointments It's set. entirely a numbers game. Yeah. So you can go, I need to have three conversations today in order to get two appointments this week. If I get two appointments this week, that'll add up to one and a half sales this month. And I'm yeah. on track. And it gives you a chance to see where you're going off the rails a little bit. We can yeah. course correct. Find your accountability. That's another big one. You need somebody who's going to give you a swift kick when you need it. I have to say, Michael, I've liked your videos the last couple of days where you're like, hey, guys, it's giving people kind of a swift kick. Yeah. Yeah. And, you Stop know, being lazy. Do the work. That, you know, and I've always been motivated. <laughs> yes. Do that work, you know, and th that's the commitment, you know, are you interested or are you committed? And the, uh, you know, I'm the kind of person that tends to be more motivated by the cheerleader. I have a real estate business coach. It's always like cheering me on, mm -hmm. but every once in a while, and he knows me well enough to know when it's like, Hey Beth, you need to do focus on this yeah. and you're looking in the wrong direction and get you yeah. back on track. Yeah. I'm 90% cheerleader, 10% kick in the ass. In the last yeah. couple of days, I've been kind of cranky. So a little bit kick in the ass. <laughs> okay. So, so Beth, uh, this is amazing. I yeah. love this question. Uh, kind of bring us home. Yeah. So I would say, um, focus on who you're spending your time with, learn your market, do the work, break down the math, just to kind of give a summary of everything we just talked about. Um, hang your hat at the right brokerage where you're going to learn what you need to learn. These first years are really important. And one of the things I want to mention is set aside time every day to become better at your craft. Excellence in your craft. There are some agents out there that aren't very good at their job and they're giving us all a bad name. Mm -hmm. And you need to find, you need to be one of the ones that is excellent at your job. And part of that also means like doing what's best for your client and not necessarily what's best for you. If they sense commission breath, people will run the other way. You need to be the person that they know is they have in their corner. And if you can focus on becoming excellent at that and knowing your contracts in and out and everything else that goes along with it, you will do great. Yeah. Save your money. I could go on and on. I could go on and on, but I'll, I'm in the interest of time. I will keep this short, but it's yeah. a great question. There's a lot to. So Aly Alyssa, I'll kind of bring us home. For my opinion, you are joining at the right time. Again, I feel really bad for the people who joined two years ago and kind of let their lifestyle expand because that's going to be painful. Um, you're, and if, if you do half of what Beth said, you're going to be around in five years, you'll be part of that 13%. So, yeah. uh, if you only do half, you're going to be around. So Beth, thank you for all you do. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me at Beth Traverso group.com. Um, or I'm on Facebook, pretty easy to find too. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.